Hello YouTube. Soviet scientists in the 1960s not only launched the first man into space, but also created a flying car, the so-called GAS-16. Even today, many may think that this unusual car has arrived from the future. Look at it. Meanwhile, the GAS-16 was created by engineers in the USSR back in 1960s and in addition to its futuristic appearance was distinguished by the fact that it could fly. To cross a car with an airplane, well, it was very appropriate for that period. The 1960s in the 20th century can be safely called a time of technological progress. Look, many world discoveries and events of those years sometimes uh, seem to us to have migrated to real life from the pages of science fiction novels. Well, this is, the, for example, this was the first space flight of Yuri Gagarin and the creation of the first laser by Theodore Maiman and the release of the first floating cars in Germany and the appearance of the first high-speed trains in Japan. Therefore, it's not surprising that it was in the early 1960s that Soviet scientists began an unusual development, the creation of a flying machine. And it happened at the famous Gorkovsky Automobilny Zavod, or Gorky Automobile Plant, GAS for short. It is still a Russian automotive manufacturer located in Nizhny Novgorod, formerly known as Gorky. The project management was entrusted to the engineer, whose last name was Smolin. This choice was not accidental, and it's not just that Smolin was the leading designer of the gas, but he used to work at the Kazan aviation plant. Therefore, who better than him could be entrusted with the creation of a car flying through the air, or rather moving on an air cushion? The project was aided by experts of a secret enterprise, the so-called Box 200, top secret facilities in the USSR, and also by Tsagi, the Central Aero Hydrodynamic Institute, with the participation of the Sergor Genikidze aviation plant. So first, the tests were carried out on models of future cars that were 10 times smaller than the real ones. Air was pumped from a hose attached to the sample and the machine hovered over the surface of water or land. At the very beginning of the 1960s, the first life-size GAS-16 car was ready. The body of the car had a streamlined shape and the cabin resembled a kind of transparent hood. The length of the device was 7.5 meters and it was 3.6 meters wide and the weight was 2 ton and 125 kilo, uh, kilograms. The car, like any aircraft, was equipped with a landing gear. Powerful fans were located in front and behind, to which an air cushion was formed. And with the help of vertical affixed screws, the machine was controlled. The maximum flight speed was 40 kilometers an hour. However, it cannot be said that the first tests were successful. When passing a straight corridor with the width of 12 meters, limited by flags, the GAS-16 went off course. The car coped even worse with the trajectory in the form of a snake. For the movement of the device in normal mode, an automobile type chassis was used with independent front suspension of the Volga GAS-21 type steering and hydraulic braking system and an automobile transmission together providing speeds actually of up 170 kilometers an hour on the highway cruising speed was established to be 65 to 70 kilometers an hour when overcoming off-road sections the chassis or chassis was removed by hydraulic drive and an air cushion provided by two 1200 millimeter diameter fans Pumping air under the bottom came into play, which lifted the device above the roadbed by about 150 millimeters. The retention of the air cushion was carried out without the use of a flexible skirt due to the shape of the body itself, in the lower part of which 
uh, had special slots located at an angle of 45 degrees to the longitudinal plane of the apparatus. Air was pumped into them through the nozzle opening from the fans. The car could even overcome water obstacles, however, while creating a strong water fog. The engine was borrowed from the GAS 13 Chaika automobile cool car. I gotta tell you, Chaika too. The GAS 16 airbag was distinguished by a very small height, only 150 millimeters. Therefore, the car could move mainly over a flat surface. When flying over water, splashes formed more strongly around the hull, which made it difficult for the driver to see and control. It is necessary, however, to pay tribute to the Soviet designers. For a long time, they continued to work, improving their car more and more. <clears throat> Excuse me. Based on the results of the first stage of testing, an improved version of the device was built, the GAS 16A. It was distinguished mainly by the installation of auxiliary main engines, uh, 2 by 28 horse horsepower motorcycle type, which with the help of a cardan transmission drove two three-bladed propellers rotating towards each other, carried out on a special pylons in detail section. The transmission provided the possibility of reverse and the rotary air rudders on the fan housings provided maneuvering. Subsequently, another upgraded version was built, the GAS 16B, which had higher technical and economic indicators. Its main difference was the use of the 394 horsepower gas turbine engine GTD-350 from the um, MI-2 helicopter to drive both the injection fans and the main propellers. However, the project was soon closed, considering that the flying gas um, was costing the Soviet state a pretty penny, and even such cars with their low speeds and maneuverability could not compete with the ordinary cars on wheels at that time. Uh, there was no clear idea of how such a vehicle could be used, and over time work in this direction was curtailed. In general, the GAS-16 combined the disadvantages of both wheeled vehicles and hovercrafts. It was complex in design, bulky, uneconomical, had a low load capacity and an extremely limited scope of application. The main disadvantage was the extremely irrational use of engine power to create an air cushion under the bottom. Well, the victory was ev eventually gained by hovercrafts with the flexible skirts. It was called the hovercrafts. The Soviet designers tried to achieve the dream of flying cars. And who knows, with adequate financing, they might have come up with other versions and succeeded. But you know what? The Cold War was in progress. The Soviets had to, sp to help all those f uh, freaking... F uh, popular liberation movements around the world and other parasites and the military expenditures received priorities. We knew that. They built the rockets but they couldn't build you know irons to for clothes or uh, things that we needed for everyday life use. But that's another story. So the project of the flying uh, Volga so to say has gone down in history and today to this day, unfortunately, not a single copy has survived, but a fragment of the GAS-16 prototypes is still kept in the GAS Museum. So maybe one day when the borders are open and peace comes to this planet, you would be able to see it. That's what I wanted to, t to tell you, but there are some interesting other inventions that the Soviet engineers uh, had made and uh, you know they we had a lot of bright people in the Soviet Union but they were also restricted in many ways um, I already told you about the invention of an internet like um, net in the Soviet Union and I will tell you in the future about a very interesting uh, flying saucer like apparatus that was uh, designed in the Soviet Union Thank you for your attention to my work. If you can support my research, please find the links in the description to this video. Please subscribe to my channel and tell others.